In this video I'm going to show you how to export geometry from Dynamo into Grasshopper. Um, so let's get started really quickly. I'm going to jump over to I'm going to jump over to Revit and we're going to make some geometry first. Um, let's make a new conceptual mass. We're just going to make some sort of surface. So I'm going to pick my vertical plane and I'm going to do a little spline. Something simple. And then you can extrude that spline. So here is your surface. If I load that into the family, that will tell me none of it is visible. I mean, rev it. So turn it back on, and here's our surface, right? So if we switch back to Dynamo really quickly and use. select face and then we just select our face and if I just zoom out really quickly and hit run we should have our face um, referenced into Dynamo so this is our surface that we're going to be working with um, if you use a watch node, you notice that it's a not your standard dynamo geometry. It's not a geometry um, that you can do, you know, typical dynamo operations on. Um, equivalent of that would be a nerve surface. So I'm actually going to use a method called two nerves. Not not curved though. There's a two nerve surface. And I'm going to convert this surface into a nerve surface. So now this is something that I can actually work with and export um, to Grasshopper. And keep in mind that only surfaces that can be converted to nerve surfaces right now, just like I, I converted this one. Um, if we're talking about surfaces, elements, points, and stuff that you're referencing from Revit, not stuff generated in here. If you're referencing it from Revit, you have to convert it into design script geometry. That means that you know you got to convert it to nerve surface. If you trim this thing in Revit and then all of a sudden you bring it in, it's not going to convert properly, so don't expect this to work with Revit elements. For the sake of this example, I'm showing you how you can use a simple surface that's actually, you know, convertible to nerve surface in Dynamo that you can use that. Um, but do not expect all of them to work. Um, that's not the point. Um, well, actually, it would be. It would be nice, but a Dynamo team is still working on that. Um, compatibility between the surfaces and solids and faces between Revit and Dynamo, it's just not there yet, so for the sake of argument, this one works. And I mean, I hope it works. We're going to see in a second. Um, but don't expect everything from Revit to be transferable. Um, so this is our inert surface, and we're going to shoot it over to Grasshopper. So we go to Mantis Shrimp, and then again, we're working with Grasshopper, not Rhino. Grasshopper, right Grasshopper, just right, and drop that node in. This is our geometry, and this probably sounds familiar, a file path. Now, a file path is going to be anything. Like Let's just, let's just rename it to O2, so it's going to create a new file instead of overriding the previous one that we've been using. Um, boolean, I don't understand the search tool, but it's a different story. Uh, set our boolean to true, hit run, see what happens. The message says that the file was written out to the location that we provided. Check it out in Grasshopper. Let's switch over really quickly. Uh, I still have my leftovers. So, this is a NURBS surface, right? that we, we're sending over a NURBS surface. 
So over here, you're gonna go for the import tab and you're gonna look for the NURBS surface. Then that component requires two inputs, a file path and a boolean toggle. And again, this could be a panel or uh, or a file path, but since last time I used the panel, I'm going to use uh, a file path component. Set one file path, and we're going to really quickly go to our file O2 Geo, feed that into file path, set that to true. And really quickly, where is our Rhino? There it is. So you can see that surface in Grasshopper, and you can see that it's an uh, untrimmed surface. So this is it. This is the basic setup for you know surface point. There's only a handful of things that you can send over at this point. So all these import nodes uh, are the ones that you can you can send over um, I just showed you a NURB surface but it's the same same premise you would shoot over uh, you know a series of points arcs lines or whatever is is on this or mesh if you had a topography for example from Revit and you just meshed it out in Dynamo you could send that over um, as a mesh but this is it I mean, it's, it's really simple, you just need to feed it a file path and a boolean toggle and that's it. If it works, it'll, it'll give you a surface that you can work with in Grasshopper. Um, and then you can send that back using you know, the workflow that I showed you in the previous video. Um, and you're going to get that surface over here. So again, NURB surface. Um, on the other surface, if it was generated in in Dynamo, not reference from Revit. Um, and trim surfaces actually don't work in general. I'm still waiting for feedback from the Dynamo team. Uh, so trim surfaces on exporting from Dynamo to Grasshopper, there's some limitations and you know trim surfaces don't work. They will be an equivalent of Braps in Grasshopper. And then poly curves um, still having some problems exporting those from uh, from Dynamo, but this is all hinging on development from the Dynamo team. So once they fix their stuff in Dynamo, I'll be able to fix this up and add those functionalities to Mantis Shrimp. So stay tuned, there's going to be some updates in the future. But for now, this should get you going. You can send some basic stuff like, you know, points, lines, splines, and whatnot. Uh, NURBS curves, NURBS surfaces, meshes, some basic stuff. So this should be good. Uh, to get you started. Alright, thanks for watching and I hope those two videos and the third that was about installation get you guys started and uh, get you working with Mantis Shrimp. Feel free to uh, send me any questions and then again if you need to troubleshoot double click this, copy it, paste it here, rewire it. If there's gonna be any errors or problems this will pop up with the yellow message and this is the message that I'm looking forward to seeing if you have any trouble. Um, Alright, thank you, thanks for watching.